a good view of the uh, Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft docked to the Prashal module, which is the node module, a multi-hatched uh, docking port for multiple vehicles uh, at the Russian segment of the station. And now we're back inside uh, Prashal at the hatchway to the Soyuz. As the crew uh, is beginning to gather for final farewells before the Soyuz crew floats uh, through the hatch and closes the hatch behind them to begin their pre-undocking preparations. And a view of Frank Rubio, soon to depart the International Space Station. Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin originally were uh, scheduled to spend just six months on the, on the station, but a uh, coolant leak developed in their original Soyuz that brought them to the station, the Soyuz MS-22, back uh, on December 14th last year. And uh, a replacement Soyuz was launched unpiloted and automatically docked to the station. That's the Soyuz MS-23 that they'll be returning home in a short time from now. Once uh, this uh, farewell opportunity is uh, concluded, Rubio, Prokopiev, and Batellin will float inside the uh, Soyuz, and Kononenko will begin uh, the process of closing the hatch on the Prashal module side of the docking interface. The Soyuz hatch will be closed, and the Soyuz crew, the departing crew, uh, will begin uh, to don their Sokol launch and entry suits. And with the photo fest now having been completed, uh, final handshakes between the crew members. And we'll be seeing uh, Prokopia, Patelin, and Rubio enter the Soyuz vehicle momentarily. Sergei Prokopiev entering uh, the Soyuz with his crewmates. They are entering into the upper section of the Soyuz called the orbital module, which uh, is basically uh, designed uh, to provide the crew members a bit of space we are ready to close before they move into the center section, which is the descent module of the spacecraft. The station hatch will be closed first, followed by the Soyuz hatch, and that will initiate the start of leak checks over the course of an orbit or so uh, to make sure that we have an airtight seal between uh, the two docking interfaces before the depressurization of the passageway is uh, conducted. Undocking scheduled at 2.54 and 30 seconds a.m. Central Time, 3.54 and 30 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. There will be an undocking command to begin uh, the process of opening the hooks, holding uh, the Soyuz to the Prashal module docking port, that takes about 90 seconds to complete before the springs push off on both sides of the docking interface to initiate uh, the physical separation of the vehicle. At the time of undocking, Expedition 69 will come to an end. Expedition 70 formally begins. And there goes the hatch on the Prashal module side of the docking interface. Four and S6 are no longer illuminated. Copy. And uh, the hatch closed on the uh, Prashal module at 11.38 p.m. Central Time, 12.38 a.m. Eastern Time. Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin are now inside their return craft, the Soyuz MS-23. The hatch uh, on the station side, the Prashal module hatch, has been closed. The uh, three departing crew members will be uh, closing uh, the Soyuz hatch momentarily, having uh, bid farewell to their crewmates and to their home that they have lived in for over a year, returning home this morning after 371 days in space, the third longest spaceflight in human spaceflight history.
a good view of the uh, three-sectioned Soyuz spacecraft. At the uh, very top of your screen is the instrumentation and propulsion module with the solar arrays deployed. The center section is where the crew is strapped into their seats. That's the descent module, the only component that survives the heat of reentry to bring the crew home. And uh, at the very top of the Soyuz, mated still for another couple of minutes to the Prashal module, that's the orbital module. Once a physical separation occurs, the uh, thrusters on the Soyuz will fire in two separate separation burns to open a, a separation rate uh, from uh, the International Space Station to an ultimate distance of about 90 miles from the station for the deorbit burn later this morning. Undocking confirmed, physical separation confirmed at 2.54 a.m. Central Time, 3.54 a.m. Eastern Time as the International Space Station flew over southeastern Mongolia. Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin have departed the complex that has been their home for over a year. Next up, in about two and a half minutes, the first separation burn to increase the opening rate between the Soyuz and the station. That'll be an eight second burn of the Soyuz engines with an opening rate of about 0.53 meters per second. Inaudible. Yes, we send the command, but inaudible, both from the control panel. And the indica indicator is no longer illuminated. The very smooth, clean separation by the Soyuz MS-23, a great view as it flies over Mongolia. On board, Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin, wrapping up 371 days in space and the third longest space flight in human history. Firing in the uh, uh, manual mode. At this point, uh, the crew uh, will have a bit of free time as they prepare for the uh, deorbit burn and their ultimate descent back into the Earth's atmosphere. How is it going? Well, it's not the first time. Well, it's going even better. Good view of the uh, departing Soyuz. Sergei Prokopiev uh, reporting that the crew is feeling well. Everything in good shape on board the MS-23. This spacecraft was launched back in February, unpiloted, made an automated docking to the International Space Station as the replacement for the damaged Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft that incurred a coolant leak back in December of last year, rendering it uh, unusable for the crew to return to Earth in. As the uh, Soyuz undocked from the International Space Station, the uh, NASA and Russian landing team, embedded with the uh, Rosaviatsa Search and Recovery Forces, uh, are taking a breather at the uh, airport in Jezkazgan, which is the intermediary staging site the uh, NASA Russian landing team flew by helicopters from Karaganda to Jezkazgan a couple of hours ago. Those helicopters uh, have been refueled and will take off in sequential fashion for the landing site to recover Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin. The uh, kilos will be wheels up around the time of the deorbit burn. 
which uh, again is scheduled at 5.24 and 9 seconds a.m. Central Time, 6.24 and 9 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. And there's our first view of the uh, Soyuz MS-23 under the chutes. Six minutes until touchdown. This video is courtesy of Roscosmos. Soyuz descending at its uh, normal rate of descent. Search and recovery forces are reporting back that everything is looking good from their perspective. Prepare 100 meters to ground. 100 meters to go. The crew being told to brace for touchdown. Object getting close to touchdown. Object touchdown. Touchdown confirmed at 6.17 a.m. Central Time. Rubio's record ride comes to an end as he, Prokopiev, and Patelin return to Earth after a 371-day, 157-million-mile journey at the International Space Station. And uh, this video now, uh, courtesy of Roscosmos, showing Soyuz Commander Sergei Prokopiev having uh, been uh, helped out of the uh, Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft. The crew home after 371 days in space, the third longest space flight in history. And of course, for Frank Rubio, the longest single space flight by an American astronaut. Easy, easy. Check the arm. Check the cables. Careful. Easy. Frank Rubio, the U.S. record holder for the longest single space flight in history, back on Earth. Here you are. Don't fall. Very nice to see you. So great. We are all here. All went well. Great, thank you. Great, you are good to be back. You were the doctor on the crew, mate. How is on in the space? How is your mate? Fantastic. Yeah, everybody did really well. You look so, very well. Thank very you. Well. Thank you. It's good to be home. <laughs> Thank you. Once again, the view uh, from the landing site, right by the Soyuz MS-23. Frank Rubio on the left, Sergei Prokopiev on the right. Check the arm on the right side. And Dmitry Patelin now being uh, removed from the Soyuz spacecraft. Easy, easy here. Turn. Legs. Turn back. A little higher. Move him a bit higher. And a view of the uh, Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft. That uh, touchdown 28 minutes ago at 
17 a.m. Central Time. Yeah, drink a little bit. The three crew members will be uh, carried in those chairs into a nearby inflatable medical tent to doff their Sokol launch and entry suits, get into more comfortable flight clothing, and then they'll be uh, transported in those ATVs to uh, three awaiting Russian Mi-8 helicopters to take off for a two-hour flight back to the staging city of Karaganda to the uh, northeast of the landing site. <laughs> and uh, Dmitry Patelin, who was board engineer number one, he and uh, Prokopiev conducted six spacewalks during their time on board the International Space Station. Let's move it a little bit closer. Closer to the center. For a photo, we stand in the back. Those Matrushka dolls are bearing uh, the images of each of the three crew members being presented to them by members of the search and recovery forces. I'm taking pictures of everybody. All perfect. Very good. Pick up. Pick up the blanket. Kopiev, uh, thumbs up, being moved uh, toward that medical tent. As we mentioned, uh, the crew members uh, were quickly extracted from the Soyuz MS-23 that landed on time, on target, and uh, are now uh, being brought uh, into the uh, nearby medical tent. And uh, there's a, a view of Frank Rubio with Joe Acaba and the rest of the NASA team helping uh, bring him into the medical tent. In the back, you see uh, ISS program manager Joel Montalbano. The crew uh, will get out of those Sokol launch and entry suits. They'll uh, put on uh, comfortable flight clothing and uh, prepare for uh, their f helicopter flight back to Karaganda, Kazakhstan, and uh, eventually their trip back to their respective home towns. Rubio coming uh, to Houston, Prokopiev and Patelin coming to Star City, Russia. So with that, uh, the crew is now back in the medical tent medical exams in store for them as uh, they have landed after a f more than a year in space, the third longest space flight in history, a successful end to a, an eventful mission that was extended by six months, but ended uh, in great fashion with a bullseye touchdown on the step of Kazakhstan. Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, Dmitry Patelin, safely back on Earth.